Hey guys, welcome back to Smoking Eagles Ride Shop. Now, it's a couple days after Thanksgiving, so I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday and a happy Thanksgiving, hanging out with your family, friends. Um, whatever you did, I hope you had a good time. Um, Jason's been thrashing at the yellow truck. Man, he's getting me all kinds of videos, so I got tons of content coming for you guys for that. So um, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Um, I've got a short little video or a shorter video. It's going to be maybe two or three videos for this. Um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. Let's go over to the other room and I'll show you what I picked up on the old Facebook Marketplace the other day. All right, guys. So the other day I was thumbing through the old Facebook Marketplace like so many others do. And I happened to cross this Bishman Tire Changer. It's a model 880-61. It's made in OCO, Minnesota by the Bishman Manufacturing Company. Proudly made in the U.S. of A. So, um, from the information I found online, these were made from 1950-ish to 70-ish. And, um, they made a couple of different models over the years. They kind of changed. I don't know exactly what year this one is. Um, we could probably look here on the tag and figure out the manufacture date on this one. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't really say. Patent number, serial number. It may have been right there. Oh, it may have been right there past the model number. I don't know. We could probably figure it out somehow. But um, anyway, these are made for smaller tires because obviously back in the 50s through the 70s, you know, tires were 13, 14, 15, maybe the occasional 16. And um, so anyway, guys are starting to get rid of these because they just won't do bigger tires like uh, most new cars have. I mean, now you get a, you know, a compact car. It's got 17 inch, you know, fancy aluminum wheels on it. And uh, these old tire changers just don't work for those. Now this one's seen a pretty rough life it's been used a lot from what i was told it was bought at an auction at an old gas station now uh, a lot of you guys remember when gas stations weren't just gas stations where you went in and got a starbucks and uh, filled up your gas tank you actually had a service center you could get your oil changed you could get tires fixed you could you know do all kinds of cool stuff but um those days are in the past unfortunately so I scooped this thing up. I think it'll work really good for us out here at the shop. But what I wanted to do with this video today with you guys is I just wanted to take a couple cans of engine degreaser and a jug of purple power. If you don't have one of these, I definitely recommend getting one. It's just a pump sprayer, the old garden variety. And I fill them up with uh, purple power. You can cut it with some water if you want, but I like to run her straight. And then uh, it makes cleaning stuff a lot easier. So I want to get this thing cleaned up and degreased so that I can look it over and make a parts list of parts that I need to get for it, hunt down. All right, guys, so got her all purple powered and degreased, rinsed down, blew it off with the air hose. Now we can really kind of look at this thing and not be afraid to touch it. And one thing I did notice is it is marked here. It says 13, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17.5. So this may do a 17 inch wheel. Now, I don't understand why it goes 13, 12, 14. It's even got these cool little nubs here. But it, and, it, and it's numbered twice in two places, so I don't know if that's because you aren't going to be able to see it or something. I, I don't know. If you know why this goes from 13 to 12, let me know. Um... Maybe the 12 is for when you move these to the inside and you're doing smaller wheels and it's talking about like a 12 inch garden tractor wheel and 13 is the lowest it'll go for a car wheel because I don't really know of any cars that made 
that ran smaller than a 13 inch wheel unless it was like a oh i don't even know a crosley or something what size wheels do those things have they're puny but anyway um yeah so i noticed that's marked so that's pretty cool now a couple of these bolts like this one seized up but the wheel spins and it's still knurled it's in good shape I noticed a lot of guys online complain that these get all eaten up. And these seem to be in pretty good shape. Oh, focus camera. These seem to be in pretty good shape. But like, see, this one's all seized up. So we need to get these bolts out. And we need to get those cleaned up. Yeah, that one's seized up too. Maybe put new bolts in there and uh, make sure these will turn. There's probably some kind of a spacer or something in there that those spin on. So we'll just have to pull those out and see what's up with those. I'm going to run a tap down through all these threads and make sure these are cleaned up because to do the smaller wheels, obviously, you need to pull these out and move them back here. And that allows you to run the smaller wheels. I had a cool sticker on the front, but somebody had painted over it. So I can't really read what it says, but it, it, it looks to me like it said Bishman across there. Bishman Manufacturing. Um, unfortunately, somebody spray painted over it. Now we've got a greaser here, so we'll we'll grease that up good. The ball screw down in here that that runs the adjuster for for your wheels. It doesn't feel all gummed up or beat up or anything, so that's good. We'll get it all greased up so it works really good. Make sure it's all cleaned up. It's really not in bad shape. Like I said before, this wheel's missing. I did measure that, and it's a 3 8 shaft on the end of there, so I'm going to look around. I'll measure the diameter of that wheel, and um, I'll try and find us a couple of wheels that we can replace those and slap them on there, and then it'll be easier to move around because right now it's kind of tough to move it around. Everything up in here looks to be in pretty good shape. I got most of the grease and slime and sludge out of there. There's the top of our air cylinder. There's our air line coming out of the bottom of there. That's not all beat up or pinched off the bottom of our cylinder. So that's in good shape. There's a couple more tags here. Of course, they... You can't tell what they said. This one's missing. It's just sticky. <laughs> Maybe it was the uh, uh, service center sticker or something. That would have been really cool to have that on there. Now it's got this arm, and I believe you turn this up, and that unlocks it. And then that allows you to move this out like this or in. Um, depending on the diameter of your rim that you're using. So as you turn this in, you can see how that is allowing that to come in further. Till there, then it stops. But this is what pushes on the bottom of the tire and breaks the bead from the bottom side. Because obviously you put your wheel on there with the nice side up. And then this grabs the inside of the back of your wheel. This breaks the bead from the bottom. This breaks the bead from the top. And you line this up with your rim. The end of this plug is junk. I have had this plugged in, but as you can see, one of the prongs is messing. So I need to get one of those. Need to get those wheels fixed like we had talked about. And I need to get a valve on this because when I hook air up here, it just wants to hit it with everything the air compressor's got. And you're supposed to have a squeeze valve on here so you can kind of walk it in, line it up with your tire, then break your bead. All right, guys, so this is what we've got. So I toured the bead breaker and the pump off the back of it. I'm going to tear that all apart. I decided that just getting the uh, water out of there and putting oil in it wasn't going to be good enough for me. So um, I tore that off. I'm going to make a separate video cleaning that all up and getting that um, back in working order. Um, I hunted around and these are the parts that I've got. 
So I took that old wheel off and I actually found two caster wheels that I already had. And I'm just gonna drill the rivets out of them. And if I need to drill the through hole a little bigger, we'll do that. I got some washers and cotter pins to put those on. I found a plug that I had laying around that I cut off of something else and it matches the one that's already on the tire machine. So we're gonna to toss that on there. I went and got brand new grade eight bolts and cleaned our little wheels up. So we'll get those put on there. I'm gonna to toss a little heat shrink tubing over top of the next in the power line and I've got us a brand new belt. So far the only thing I've had to buy is this belt. I had to remove the pulley to uh, get that belt off of there. The old belt was not stretched, but it was completely wore out. So anyway, let's uh, get to tossing this stuff on there. Oh, I also got some grease so we can grease up a few things, so. All right, guys, so I think that's about gonna sum it up for this video. We got those tires on there, got them greased up. I know they're not perfect, but they're good enough for as little as we're gonna move the thing around and wheels that kind of work are better than no wheels that don't work. I got everything greased up. I think I needed to, the ball screw there and lubed everything up, got a new greaser in there. We got a new belt, got it tight, um, fixed our power cord here. Got all the slime and sludge off the thing so you're willing to touch it and uh, yeah. Seems to be doing its thing. I'll call this uh, part one or episode one or I don't know, uh, stage one of the, uh, I wouldn't call it a rebuild, but um, clean up and uh, repair of this old Bishman tire machine that I got. Um, yeah, if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends. If you enjoyed this video or you got any questions about anything that I did, just uh, hit me up in the comments down below. I'll try and answer them as best I can. And uh, I'm going to go get working on fixing the air cylinder on the back of this thing. That'll be episode 2, version 2, video 2. So uh, if you got a Bishman tire machine or you're just interested in what I'm going to do, it's got a pretty simple air cylinder on the back of there. I'm going to try and get it cleaned up as best I can. I went ahead and pulled it off of there because I was just gonna put oil in it and I'm like, I just can't do that. I won't be able to, I don't know, sleep at night or something. I don't know why I would feel bad about that. But um, anyway, I wanted to tear it all apart and uh, just really get the crud and stuff cleaned out of it so it's in uh, the best working shape it can be for us. So look out for that video, it'll be coming soon. And yeah, till next time, keep on wrenching. Peace.